Earth had always seemed quiet in the vast expanse of the universe. For many years, humans looked up at the stars, wondering if they were alone. The answer came one sunny afternoon, when an enormous alien ship appeared in the sky. The people on Earth were both excited and fearful. What did these visitors want? Could they be friends, or were they foes? In a high-security military base, Captain John Harris received the news first. He was a seasoned military leader, known for his calm under pressure. Alongside him was Dr. Emily Carter, brilliant scientist who had dedicated her life to understanding the mysteries of space. Together, they were the first line of defense for humanity. Captain Harris, there's an unidentified flying object in our atmosphere, a young officer reported, his voice trembling slightly. Stay calm, officer. Dr. Carter, any thoughts on this? Captain Harris asked, turning to the scientist. Dr. Carter adjusted her glasses, her mind racing with possibilities. It could be anything, Captain. We need more information. Let's wait for their next move. Moments later, a transmission came through. The voice on the other end was calm, almost too calm. Greetings, humans. I am Commander Xera of the Zenari Empire. We come in peace and wish to learn about your world. Captain Harris and Dr. Carter exchanged glances. Peace was a good sign, but they had to remain cautious. This is Captain Harris of Earth's military. We welcome you, Commander Xera. What can we do for you? He replied, keeping his tone neutral. We seek knowledge, Captain Harris. Perhaps a tour of your scientific facilities. Commander Xera's voice was smooth but there was an underlying tone that made Captain Harris uneasy. Of course, Commander. We will arrange something immediately. Dr. Carter will lead the tour, Captain Harris responded, deciding it was best to keep the visitors under close supervision. The next day, a smaller shuttle from the alien ship landed at the military base. Commander Xera and her lieutenant, Farn, stepped out. They were taller than humans, with pale blue skin and large, dark eyes. Their movements were graceful, almost fluid, as if they floated rather than walked. Welcome to Earth, Commander Xera, Lieutenant Tharn. Dr. Carter greeted them, extending her hand. The aliens hesitated for a moment before mimicking the gesture. Thank you, Dr. Carter. We are eager to see your scientific advancements, Sara replied her eyes scanning the surroundings with keen interest. As they walked through the halls of the research facility, Dr. Carter explained various projects. Here, we study biology, trying to understand the building blocks of life. Over there, we work on quantum physics, exploring the smallest particles in the universe. Commander Xera nodded, her expression one of mild curiosity. Impressive. Your technology is more advanced than we expected. Lieutenant Tharn, who had been silent until now, leaned in to whisper to his commander. We must acquire their knowledge, commander. It will make our empire unstoppable. Dr. Carter noticed their whispering and frowned slightly. What were they plotting? She needed to stay alert. Captain Harris, who had been monitoring the tour from a secure room, watched the exchange on a screen. He tapped his finger on the table, deep in thought. I don't trust them, Emily, he muttered to himself. Meanwhile, in the lab, Sarah's eyes landed on a piece of equipment. What is this? She asked, pointing to a large machine humming softly. This is our latest energy generator. It provides a clean and limitless power source, Dr. Carter explained, her pride evident. Fascinating, Sarah said her voice laced with intrigue. Could we study it more closely? Perhaps alone? I'm afraid that's not possible. Security protocols, you understand. Captain Harris's voice came through a hidden speaker, making both Sarah and Tharn jump slightly. Of course, Sarah replied, regaining her composure. But could we at least see a demonstration? Dr. Carter nodded. Certainly. Follow me. They were led to a large room where the energy generator was located. Dr. Carter activated the machine, and a bright blue light filled the room. The air seemed to vibrate with power. 
This generator can power an entire city with no harmful emissions, Dr. Carter explained. Sarah and Farn exchanged a glance. This was the technology they needed, but how to get it without causing suspicion? As the tour continued, Dr. Carter showed them various other projects, but Sarah's mind was fixated on the energy generator. She needed to devise a plan to take the technology back to her empire. After the tour, Sarah and Farn were escorted back to their shuttle. Thank you for the tour, Dr. Carter. We have much to discuss among ourselves, Sarah said, a polite but distant smile on her face. Of course, if you have any further questions, feel free to contact us, Dr. Carter replied, returning the smile. As soon as the shuttle doors closed, Sarah turned to Farn. We need that generator. Prepare a team to extract the data. Farn nodded. Understood, Commander. We will strike tonight. Back at the military base, Captain Harris and Dr. Carter were debriefing. They were too interested in our energy generator, Dr. Carter said, worry etched on her face. I noticed. We need to increase security around it and prepare for any possible threat, Captain Harris responded, his mind already formulating a plan. That night, the base was on high alert. Extra guards were posted around the research facility, and security cameras monitored every corner. Captain Harris and Dr. Carter stayed in the command center, watching the screens closely. As predicted, a team of alien soldiers approached the facility under the cover of darkness. They moved silently, their blue skin blending with the night shadows, but they didn't know that every step they took was being watched. Commander Xera, we've breached the perimeter. Moving to the generator room, Tharn's voice came through the communicator. Good, be swift. We can't afford to be caught. Sarah's voice responded, tense with anticipation. In the command center, Captain Harris's eyes narrowed as he watched the alien team on the screen. They're here. Everyone, stay sharp, he instructed his team. As the aliens entered the generator room, they were met with a surprise. The room was filled with guards, weapons at the ready. Freeze, drop your weapons, one of the guards commanded. Farn hesitated for a split second before raising his hands. We mean no harm. We just wish to study your technology. Captain Harris's voice boomed through the room's intercom. You're trespassing and attempting to steal our technology. Leave now or we will take action. Sarah's voice came through Tharn's communicator, sounding desperate. Bort mission, get out of there now. Tharn signaled his team to retreat. They backed up slowly, weapons still raised, but they knew they were beaten. As the alien team returned to their shuttle, Commander Xera's face was a mask of fury. This isn't over. We will find another way, she vowed. Back on Earth, Captain Harris and Dr. Carter breathed a sigh of relief. That was close, Dr. Carter said, her voice shaky. Too close, but we showed them we won't be easy prey, Captain Harris replied. Determination in his eyes. We need to be ready for anything. They're not going to give up. Dr. Carter added. We will be, Captain Harris said firmly. For now, let's make sure our defenses are stronger than ever. The first encounter with the Zenari Empire had ended in a stalemate, but both sides knew this was just the beginning. Earth had proven its resilience, but the real battle was yet to come. The tension in the military base was palpable. The failed attempt by the Zanari Empire to steal human technology had left everyone on high alert. Captain John Harris and Dr. Emily Carter knew they needed to stay vigilant. The next move could come at any time, and they had to be ready. Captain Harris, our surveillance shows the alien ship is still in orbit. They haven't made any further attempts to contact us. A young officer reported, keep monitoring them. They won't give up that easily. Captain Harris responded, Dr. Carter, we need to ensure our technology is safe. Any ideas? Dr. Carter nodded thoughtfully. We should create false data. If they try to steal our information again, they'll get something that looks valuable but is completely useless. Good idea. 
Let's set it up immediately, Captain Harris agreed. The research facility buzzed with activity as scientists and engineers worked to implement Dr. Carter's plan. They created fake schematics, false energy readings, and misleading technical data. Everything was designed to look real, but would be worthless to the aliens. Meanwhile, up in the alien ship, Commander Xera was seething. She paced back and forth, her mind racing with plans and counterplans. We need that technology. Farn, the failure last night was unacceptable. Yes, Commander. I have a new plan. We will send a diplomatic envoy to distract them while a covert team extracts the data, Lieutenant Tharn suggested. Very well, make the preparations. This time, we will not fail, Sarah ordered, her eyes burning with determination. The next morning, a message arrived at the military base. This is Commander Xera. We request another meeting to discuss peaceful cooperation and exchange of knowledge. Captain Harris and Dr. Carter were suspicious but decided to play along. We can't trust them, but we need to see what they're planning, Captain Harris said. Agree, we should prepare for anything, Dr. Carter replied. The meeting was arranged at a neutral location, a large conference room in the research facility. The walls were lined with security cameras, and hidden microphones ensured every word would be recorded. Welcome. Commander Xera, we hope this meeting will lead to a better understanding between our peoples, Captain Harris greeted the alien leader. Thank you, Captain Harris. We share the same hope, Sarah replied, her smile polite but insincere. We wish to discuss a mutual exchange of technology and knowledge. Dr. Carter joined the conversation. What exactly are you interested in, Commander? We are fascinated by your energy generator. It is unlike anything we have seen. We believe it could help both our civilizations, Sarah explained. Captain Harris and Dr. Carter exchanged a quick glance. They knew the generator was the target. We are open to discussions, but we must ensure any exchange is fair and secure, Dr. Carter said cautiously. Of course, we propose a team of our scientists work alongside yours to better understand this technology, Sarah suggested. Captain Harris was about to respond when his communicator buzzed. He excused himself and stepped out of the room. What is it? He asked the officer on the other end. Sir, we've detected unusual activity in the generator room. It looks like another breach attempt, the officer reported. Understood. Keep them occupied. Dr. Carter and I will handle it, Captain Harris replied, returning to the conference room. Commander Xera, we appreciate your interest. However, we need time to consider your proposal. Let us continue this discussion tomorrow, he said. Xera's eyes narrowed slightly, but she nodded. Very well. We look forward to it. As soon as the aliens left, Captain Harris and Dr. Carter rushed to the generator room. There, they found another team of alien soldiers attempting to access the equipment. Stop right there. Captain Harris shouted, his weapon drawn. The aliens froze, their plan foiled once again. You won't get away with this. One of them hissed. Dr. Carter stepped forward, her voice firm. You're making a mistake. You can't steal our technology. Leave now or face the consequences. The aliens slowly backed away, realizing they were outmatched. As they retreated, Captain Harris turned to Dr. Carter. We need to strengthen our defenses. This isn't over. Agreed. We should also analyze what they've already tried to take. It might give us insight into their plans, Dr. Carter suggested. For the next several days, the base was a hive of activity. Security was tightened, and the fake data was updated to be even more convincing. Meanwhile, Dr. Carter and her team analyzed the aliens' previous attempts to understand their true motives. Captain, we found something interesting. The data they tried to access wasn't just about the generator. They were looking at our communication systems too, Dr. Carter reported. Why would they need that? Captain Harris asked, puzzled. Maybe they're planning something bigger. We need to be ready for anything, Dr. Carter said, her face serious. 
As they continued their preparations, Commander Xera and Lieutenant Farn were devising a new strategy. We need to change our approach. Direct attempts aren't working, Farn said. Agreed. We need to find a way to earn their trust, then strike when they least expect it, Sarah replied. The next day, Sarah contacted Captain Harris with a new proposal. Captain, we wish to host a delegation of your scientists on our ship. It will be an opportunity for mutual learning and understanding. Captain Harris was wary but saw an opportunity to gather intelligence. We accept your invitation, Commander. Dr. Carter will lead our team. Dr. Carter and a small group of scientists prepared for their visit to the alien ship. They were equipped with hidden recording devices and strict instructions to observe everything. As they boarded the shuttle, Dr. Carter couldn't help but feel a mix of excitement and apprehension. Stay sharp, everyone. This is our chance to learn more about them, she said. Upon arriving on the alien ship, they were greeted by Commander Xera. Welcome. We hope this visit will foster goodwill between our peoples, she said, her smile unwavering. Dr. Carter returned the smile, though she remained cautious. Thank you, Commander. We are eager to learn about your technology as well. The tour of the alien ship was both fascinating and intimidating. The technology was advanced far beyond what humans had achieved. But Dr. Carter and her team remain focused on their mission. These are our energy cores. They power our entire ship, Tharn explained, showing them a large, pulsating machine. Impressive, Dr. Carter said, taking mental notes. Our generator is similar, but on a much smaller scale. As the tour continued, Dr. Carter noticed several areas that were heavily guarded. What do you keep in there? She asked, pointing to a secured door. Sensitive information. I'm afraid I cannot show you that, Sarah replied smoothly. Dr. Carter nodded, but her curiosity was piqued. Of course, we have similar protocols on Earth. After the tour, the humans and aliens sat down for a formal dinner. The food was unlike anything the humans had ever seen, but they tried it out of politeness. To new friendships and mutual understanding, Sarah toasted, raising a glass of a strange, glowing liquid. To new beginnings, Dr. Carter echoed, though she kept her guard up. Throughout the dinner, Dr. Carter and her team continued to observe and gather information. They noticed subtle details, like the way the aliens communicated non-verbally and the advanced technology integrated into their daily lives. After the dinner, Dr. Carter and her team were escorted back to their shuttle. Thank you for the hospitality, Commander Xera. We look forward to further cooperation, Dr. Carter said. The pleasure was ours. We hope to visit Earth again soon, Sarah replied, her eyes glinting with hidden intentions. As the humans returned to Earth, Dr. Carter debriefed her team. We gathered valuable information. Now we need to analyze it and prepare for their next move. Captain Harris met them upon their return. What did you find? Plenty. Their technology is advanced, but we saw some weaknesses. We need to use this information wisely, Dr. Carter said. For the next few weeks, the humans worked tirelessly to strengthen their defenses and develop new strategies. They knew the aliens would try again, and they had to be ready. Meanwhile, up in the alien ship, Commander Xera and Lieutenant Tharn were preparing for their next move. We have learned much about the humans. Now, we must find a way to turn this knowledge to our advantage. Sarah said, Yes, Commander. We will strike when they least expect it. Tharn replied, his eyes filled with determination. The game of cat and mouse continued, with both sides trying to outwit the other. The humans had proven their resilience, but the aliens were not easily deterred. As tensions rose, the stakes became higher. The future of both civilizations hung in the balance. The alien ship hovered ominously above Earth, a constant reminder of the ongoing tension between humans and the Xanari Empire. Inside the military base, Captain John Harris and Dr. Emily Carter worked tirelessly to prepare for the inevitable confrontation. 
They knew the aliens would not stop until they had what they wanted. We need to be one step ahead of them, always, Captain Harris said, pacing the room. Dr. Carter, how are the preparations coming along? Dr. Carter looked up from her computer. We've updated our security protocols and strengthened our defenses. The false data is ready. If they try to steal our technology again, they'll get nothing but junk. Good. We need to be ready for anything, Captain Harris replied, his face set in a determined expression. Meanwhile, aboard the alien ship, Commander Xera and Lieutenant Tharn were finalizing their latest plan. They had decided to use diplomacy as a cover for their true intentions. We will request another meeting with the humans, this time proposing a cultural exchange. While they are distracted, our team will infiltrate their facility and extract the data, Sarah explained. Yes, Commander. This time, we will not fail, Tharn agreed. The next morning, another message arrived at the military base. This is Commander Xera. We propose a cultural exchange to foster better understanding between our peoples. We hope you will accept our invitation. Captain Harris and Dr. Carter discussed the proposal. It sounds like another trap, but we need to see what they're planning, Captain Harris said. I agree. We should prepare for anything, Dr. Carter replied. The cultural exchange was arranged to take place in a neutral location within the research facility. The room was adorned with human and alien artifacts, showcasing the best of both cultures. As the aliens arrived, Captain Harris greeted them warmly. Welcome, Commander Xera. We hope this exchange will lead to a better understanding between our peoples. Thank you, Captain Harris. We share the same hope, Sarah replied, her smile courteous. Dr. Carter led the aliens through a display of human achievements, from art and music to science and technology. These are some of our greatest accomplishments. We believe in sharing knowledge and fostering cooperation, she explained. Sarah nodded, her eyes scanning the room. Your culture is indeed rich and diverse. We have much to learn from each other. As the cultural exchange continued, Sarah's team moved into position. They had been given the task of infiltrating the generator room and extracting the data. Tharn led the team, his eyes focused and determined. Commander, we are in position. Tharn whispered into his communicator. Proceed with the extraction, Sarah replied keeping her attention on the human displays. In the generator room, Tharn and his team began their work. They bypassed security systems and accessed the main computer. Data extraction initiated. Tharn reported, back in the cultural exchange room, Dr. Carter noticed Sarah's distraction. Is everything all right, Commander? She asked, her voice polite but probing. Yes, everything is fine. I am simply admiring your achievements," Sarah replied, her smile never faltering. Captain Harris, who had been watching the exchange closely, received a message on his communicator. Sir, the aliens are in the generator room. They're trying to steal the data, the officer reported. Understood. Move in and apprehend them, Captain Harris ordered. In the generator room, alarms blared as security forces stormed in. Hands up, you're under arrest, one of the guards shouted. Tharn and his team were taken by surprise. They raised their hands, realizing they had been caught once again. This isn't over, Tharn hissed. As the alien soldiers were escorted out, Captain Harris and Dr. Carter confronted Sarah. Your attempt to steal our technology has failed. Leave now or we will take further action, Captain Harris said firmly. Sarah's face twisted in anger, but she knew she had no choice. Very well, we will leave, but this is not the end, she replied, her voice cold. As the aliens returned to their ship, Dr. Carter turned to Captain Harris. We need to stay vigilant. They will try again. I know. But for now, we've shown them that we won't be easily defeated, Captain Harris said. Back on the alien ship. Sarah and Tharn regrouped. We have underestimated the humans. They are more cunning than we thought, Sarah admitted. 
Yes, Commander. We need to rethink our strategy. Tharn agreed. The humans continued to strengthen their defenses, preparing for the next move. They knew the aliens would not give up easily, and they had to be ready for anything. Meanwhile, Dr. Carter and her team analyzed the data from the alien ship. They had managed to gather valuable information during their visit, and now they needed to use it to their advantage. Captain, we found something interesting. The aliens have been studying our communication systems. They might be planning a larger attack, Dr. Carter reported. We need to be ready. Increase our surveillance and prepare for any possible threat, Captain Harris ordered. Days turned into weeks, and the tension continued to build. Both sides were preparing for the next confrontation, knowing that the stakes were higher than ever. One night, a strange signal was detected coming from the alien ship. Captain, we're picking up an unusual transmission from the Zenari ship, an officer reported. Put it on screen, Captain Harris ordered. The screen flickered to life, showing Commander Xera. Captain Harris, we request a final meeting to discuss terms of peace. Let us end this conflict before it escalates further, she said. Captain Harris and Dr. Carter exchanged glances. We need to be cautious. This could be another trap. Dr. Carter warned. I agree. But we can't ignore the possibility of a peaceful resolution. Let's hear what they have to say, Captain Harris decided. The meeting was arranged in a secure location, with heavy security on both sides. As Commander Xera and Lieutenant Tharn arrived, the tension was palpable. Thank you for agreeing to this meeting. We wish to discuss terms of peace, Sarah began. We are willing to listen, but we will not tolerate any more attempts to steal our technology, Captain Harris replied firmly. Understood. We propose a mutual non-aggression pact and a framework for future cooperation, Sarah said, her tone serious. Dr. Carter studied Sarah's face, looking for any signs of deception. What are your true intentions, Commander? Why are you so interested in our technology? She asked. Sarah hesitated for a moment before answering. Our empire is struggling. We need your technology to survive, but we are willing to cooperate peacefully if you agree to help us. Captain Harris considered her words carefully. We want peace, but we need assurances that you will not betray us again. Greed. We will provide whatever guarantees you require," Sarah replied. The negotiations continued late into the night, with both sides working to find common ground. In the end, a tentative agreement was reached. The humans would share some of their technology in exchange for a promise of non-aggression from the Zenari Empire. As the meeting concluded, Captain Harris and Dr. Carter felt a sense of cautious optimism. We may have just averted a war. Dr. Carter said, let's hope so, but we need to stay vigilant. Trust is earned, not given, Captain Harris replied. Back on Earth, the agreement was met with a mix of relief and skepticism. Many people were hopeful for a peaceful future, but others remained wary of the aliens' intentions. In the days that followed, both sides worked to implement the terms of the agreement. Joint scientific teams were formed and efforts were made to foster better understanding and cooperation. Dr. Carter and her team continued to monitor the situation closely. We need to ensure that this peace lasts. We can't afford to be complacent, she said. I agree. We'll keep a close watch on the Zenari and be ready for anything, Captain Harris replied. As the humans and aliens worked together, a fragile peace began to take hold. There were still challenges and mistrust but both sides were committed to making it work. The story of Earth's resilience and cunning had become a legend among the stars. The humans had proven that they were not to be underestimated, and their determination to protect their world had earned them respect and admiration. In the end, it was a story of courage, intelligence, and the unyielding spirit of humanity. The future was uncertain, but for now, there was hope for a better tomorrow. And as Captain Harris and Dr. Carter looked up at the stars, they knew that whatever came next, they would face it together.